because the city closed. Who can come in the city? It's unclear right now as to how this entire event will be staged. It's not a protest zone. It's a designated speech area <laughs> where you're being provided. And those that wish to participate, you have the right to rally, to parade and demonstrate anywhere in this country. And you have that right. But this is an opportunity where we provide you a direct feed into the summit. That is all. Here is, is uh, some of the priorities uh, for Harper upcoming. Um, we're chairing, of course, uh, Canada is chairing the G8 and the G20 yep. leader summits this year this in June. Year. And our priority for development, really, for the G8 meeting is to focus on maternal and child health on a series of investments we want all G8 countries to do in coordination to, uh, to really save the lives of women and children. We think that with re reasonably modest investments, and let's, let's face it, with uh, the fiscal situation that a lot of countries are in, mm. uh, investments in the future are going to have to be fairly modest. But with modest investments, we think we can make a big difference in, uh, in these areas. So yes, we will be maintaining our aid levels and, uh, and obviously focusing on priorities like maternal and child health going forward. That's terrific. Thank you. So there we have it there. Stephen Harper, this, and already uh, uh, thousands of people have already watched this on YouTube. He has, he's gets into a lot of topics, but I thought that was a good one to play. First off, because I want to ask you, or, or we're going to get into talking about this G20, G8, but what, what, what do you think about there, about his priorities of helping women and children? Do you think that this is a... Uh... Well, uh, what concerns me about targeting one particular segment or more or, or, or of, a, of a population is it's not designed to help. It's designed to fragment op opposition and, and divide and conquer is what it's all about. You, if you're going to help a population, you help a population. You don't help specific segments of a population. Uh, does it matter whether it's a woman or a man if he's starving to death? Shouldn't. Many of us have marched many times um, and uh, believe that this is a democratic right of all of us. The streets of Toronto are going to have some really creative, good protests happening. Who do I write a letter to in Ottawa to say, hey, how about Dundas Square? Fundamentally, I would, I would approach the Prime Minister's office. I have a petition circulating because I've raised the question that this G20 really should be at CNE in the first place rather than Metro uh, Convention Centre. Um, the Harper Conservative ignored it. We have not had much success in overriding uh, federal uh, authorities on these issues. It is, it is being um, effectively designed in Ottawa um, and managed in Toronto, and so we have limited scope as to how we can direct uh, uh, even the location of the, of the convention, let alone where the fences are going to go. This is going to be big, though. This, this is a G, we're talking about a G20, G8 meetings taking place in Ontario. I guess the G8 is going to be up north, but the G20 will be actually right here in downtown Toronto. Um, yes. w w what are you thinking about this? I'm thinking that this is a wonderful opportunity for Canadians, uh, for the Canadian public, to let the world know that we are not happy with the way things are being done. Uh, we're going to have media coverage from every major country in the world here in Toronto. And this is a good time to voice your opposition to some of the terrible things that have been going on in this country. Say the police get a little overzealous and, and there's tear gas uh, used on protesters. I, I worry that that will antagonize residents. Any person in the city that's injured has the right and we will do everything in our power to get them to medical assistance. Absolutely. Despite being in a quote unquote, you know, red zone or yellow zone or whatever zone that you're closing off because of the because of the protests themselves I can tell you this 30 years of being a police officer I'm very proud of the people that go out and they hold people accountable be it government officials or whatever I'm also very proud to be a police officer and I'm also very proud to be a Canadian and I respect our citizens when they go and they exercise their democratic rights and I am there and I've been there many times all across the city protecting those people that are exercising their democratic rights. Looking for a little bit of resistance love this summer, come to the demonstration. Anti-colonial, anti-capitalist, sounds pretty peaceful to me. We are demonstrating because we are against the mandate of the G20. And the world is there. Right. The world is there to see you and yeah. hopefully to listen. Uh, with your history and activism, how, how big uh, would you say this is in, in terms of Toronto? Uh, uh, up, until, up until this, the Vietnam War created the largest 
activism that was happening in, in Toronto in my lifetime. And I think that this is going to make uh, the turnout for things like that seem small. Nice. I think that we've got people from from all over the world, activists from all over the world, coming to Toronto to speak out against what the G20 are doing. Right, right. And this uh, that 20, 20 world leaders, 20 of the biggest uh, economies in the world meeting up. I have to be a little concerned on your promise to do that because our democratic rights in doing this protest have been greatly infringed by, say, these two gentlemen over here who have been following us and imposing themselves on our meeting despite our you know, request not to have that happen. It's, it's serious, people riot, people torch cars, people, you know. I can assure you there will be sufficient security on the ground to deal with any inevitability. Now, the other thing I have uh, a concern with is in terms of uh, traffic. Uh, I do work up by Vic Park and Consumers. However, should I expect any delay on the highway? I cannot give you any assurances of what will transpire. That's why we have the Twitter site set up. And you can also listen, like I said, 680 News and all of your other media outlets. That'll be your best format to stay abreast of what's going on. There isn't going to be too many positive things. This was yeah. instilled on us by the feds. They continue to do this. Now it's no longer just the entertainment district. They're working very hard to make sure that when the global economy is debated, the local economy and local neighborhoods are not damaged. And the New World Order is coming to town uh, for Toronto at the end of June for the G20 summit. Yeah. Um, and I was wondering, you know, with your experience in Vancouver and the Winter Olympics, do you, do you, do you have any recommendations uh, for uh, people here in Toronto about what, what will happen to the city, I guess, when these major events? Well, if I were going to protest the G20 or the G8, I would zero in on something specific. You know, outbursts of anger where you're coming with black flags and screaming for the cameras, even though that's a gratuitous fun thing, is really counterproductive. I'm hoping the people who protest the G20 will protest the worldwide prohibition that we have, because that's something young people can really relate to. All these governments that are attending the G20 have prohibition policies in effect that jail people in their country. And that's what I think our people should emphasize if they're going to go out and protest, is prohibition is in all these 20 countries. It soaks up billions of dollars in valuable funds. It's completely counterproductive. The more we enforce the drug war, the more crime and violence we have. And all these things are easy to explain to people and are factually based. So when we protest the G20 next month, I think we should focus in on the prohibition policies of those countries because it's something young people can really relate to, something specific we can ask them to get rid of that will benefit everybody. That's a win-win thing is to get rid of prohibition policies, save money, increase civil liberties, increase the benefits to the people, you know, free the weed. All those things would be great things to point out to the G20.